It is the second week here in the GG League's Overwatch Elite Summer League. I am Sam Talks, joined here by the ever amazing to try hard Ray. And Ray, we're going to be seeing Muck Duck again, and they're going to be facing up against their new opponent, UVU. These two teams are both undefeated right now. Yeah, I mean, again, like you mentioned, we saw Muck Duck on the cast last week, and they pretty much dominated last week against uh, against uh, Replay Stallions, and In it was just show yeah. of force. Yeah, it was incredible. They they just had incredible plays, and it'll be really interesting to see, you know, the two top teams here going at it. I have to see who's going to come out on top here. And I, you know, two undefeated teams. What? can go wrong. It's going to be explosive action. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the maps that we're going to be starting off with here today. And our first one is going to be Nepal Ray. Yeah, Nepal is a very diverse control map because the three the three different sub maps within Nepal are just so diverse and different in the compositions you can see, especially when you just talk about Sanctum, the inside one. That can be a crapshoot for the kind of compositions you see. You know, Double Shield tends to be a good one for that map, but you can also see ball compositions. And then you think about Village and, you know, you know, the Rush, uh, you know, Ice Queen with May Sim tends to be a really good composition. And then when it comes to Shrine, you know, Ball Diva, Rush, like, you, you, again, it's just a very versatile map that we're going to see here on Nepal. Yeah, and we already have an idea of how Muck Duck likes to work. They were pretty dominant no matter what they were playing against the replay stallions. We saw, I mean, we saw Reaper action. We saw Reinhardt Ball. We saw all kinds of different things that throw out into the wild and it stuck every single time for Muck Duck here. So that adaptability, like you've been saying, uh, especially when it comes to Nepal, is going to be so important. Yeah, it seemed like they favored the rush style composition last week. Uh, I mean, we don't know for sure if that's all they play because, you know, they kind of cruise to an easy victory. So, you know, if you're in that point where you feel like you got this in the bag, are you really going to pull out all your tricks and all your stops that you got in your bag? I don't think so. So I think we could see a lot here from Muck Duck. Yeah, I mean, when you had such an easy week like you did last week, it's just take a break, take a breather, go in and... Uh... Yeah, do what works and what helps you to secure the win. So UVU, though, they are, uh, like we've been saying this entire time, they haven't been defeated there. One and oh, this particular moment. This is where things are going to be interesting if they can hold up against the destructive force of Muck Duck. Yeah, I mean, again, we haven't seen UVU on this cast. And again, these were all new teams. So it's not like we have any history to go off for UVU so I can't sit here and talk much about them because I don't know the compositions that they run we're just gonna have to you know experience this together as a team me and you and the viewers out there so it's gonna be really interesting to see this brand new team here on the cast absolutely and as we're assembling the heroes and have a little bit of speculation on what we might see and the area here of Nepal that we are in this current subset map type pretty similar comps except for the DPS here right yeah, interesting. Uh, you know, like I said, the the Ice Queen tends to be what's dominant on this map, but just running Sim in general, because you can get to the point, uh, set up your teleport. I mean, you set up your teleport, obviously, and it helps you get to point faster because you clear all that distance, then you have your Lucio speed boost, and then you can just set up your turrets, and then your Sim's able to farm beam off the Rhine Shield as they're coming in. And it's just a deadly setup here on the village, as opposed to um, Muck Duck, who was running the Reaper Soldier. So my guess is they're probably going to take the high ground route. They're not going to want to try and go to point with this setup they have. They want to get the soldier on the high ground, have him raining some damage from a distance, and then somehow get their Reaper behind, maybe TP behind him, or maybe he takes the high ground all the way around and drops down on them, and just try and get a cheeky pick while the rest of the team rushes the front line. Yeah, it's going to be... The so the DPS diff here. Can the Symmetra come in clutch with being able to break through the shields of the Reinhardt? Is the Soldier 76 on Muck Duck's side as it burns through whatever is put in front of them? And then two, like you said with the Reaper, the Reaper can go back behind. behind. It can cause the, can give you the flank routes that you need. It can give you the just tank busting potential to really raise chaos. And we talked about it earlier before too with the... 
Reaper ultimate that we saw from Muck Dug. They know when to use it, they know how to use it, and they are destructive. They are dangerous when they use it too, on top of that, Ray. So <laughs> DPS wise, this is where I think the difference maker is gonna be. Yeah, if you guys remember back to the cast from last week on Li Zhang, the Reaper had a huge ultimate where he was able to TP in there. They were able to get the Zarya bubbles out just in time for him to unleash that Death Blossom on the entire team. It was very impressive. So we know they have the team coordination and synergy to pull off some big plays. And that's what we are hoping for here, Ray, is going to be the big plays, the things that just knocks you off your socks and you look forward forward to in the future when you are going to get those you know, just those big wins and everything that's what you that's what you want that's what's going to be needed here especially as we are you know you, you're getting used to overwatch one and now we're going to have to move over into the soon to be new world of overwatch two i'm so excited for that gonna get my beta access I, i'm very excited to start playing that game and getting ready to cast it as this could very be the last season of this league that we see on Overwatch 1. Yeah, and that's well that's where it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, these these players they are going to have to adapt, right? You're going to lose your one tank, you're going to have to switch over and play different setups, different combinations. You're going to have new heroes like the Junker Queen or Sojourn. And then we have see I, I like we we saw an owl earlier today just how destructive sojourn is just how insane the plays you can have off of her alone and as we start getting into figuring out these new metas uh, centered around one tank that's going to be where these players can potentially find something new to help set themselves apart from other teams especially here like you said this could be the last league that we play in overwatch one yeah like i said just you know reap it in while we still have it i know you know overwatch one's a dead game you know it's not fun we just want overwatch 2 to come out but i mean just just let the nostalgia hit for a little bit just just know Sweet. that we're never going to be having 6v6 ever again and just enjoy it while we still have it yeah you gotta soak in all of the love that you can so apologies by the way guys unfortunately we had a couple of issues as we were going to the game turns out skins were enabled tisk tisk how we're dare just gonna you. wait yeah how dare you <laughs> we're just gonna wait here as we get back into the game uh back into nepal which hey look at that here we are and this and time it's sanctum yeah this is the crapshoot map that i was talking about uh double shield tends to be very good and ball compositions rush you can make it work you're just going to have to clear this distance from this double shield that UVU wants to run here without losing your Rhine shield too quickly. It's going to rely a lot on being able to sustain while you get into the face of this double shield because you do not want this double shield having space here, especially with Nathers on this Hanzo. Just the shield break potential he's going to have here could be the difference in them stopping the rotations this rush is trying to make. Yeah, all right. Oh, and mercy, mercy. Quick switch back over onto the Soldier 76 because I want to stick on that Symmetra. All right, now there's you putting in so much damage, throwing it down those arrows to break that Reinhardt shield. It's not going to last too long here, especially when having Risa just raining down the pressure too, along with Puba. And there you are. They're going to have to back off soon here. And every little second that Muck Duck is spending in this area, Reinhardt shields are going to have to go down further, looking out onto the point. UVU Esports is going to pick this back up very soon. But still, these two teams finally have a first pick. Puba taking out Jaeger. And yeah, Muck Duck can't continue this off for very much longer. Has to retreat back towards their point. Yeah, if you notice that. Yeah, if you notice what happened there, Muck Duck totally got stalled there by where the statues oh. start coming in, by the Mega over there on the side. As we're going to see two huge picks coming for UVU, and they're just going to clean yeah. up and wipe them out for this round. Look at that aggressive. Kuba already with the, the flux. Look at that aggressiveness. Sure, they, made, they, they took down Jaeger at the very beginning of that team fight. That didn't stop them, and Mercy Mercy already popped their tactical visor, kills them out, and staggers it here. They are sitting already at 30% and Muck Duck are now stuck in their spawn. Yeah, incredible. The problem was they got stuck at that statue area and did oh, not, and as Ryan's gonna no. go down, it's already gonna stop the push immediately. Yeah, you um, can't go in off of that anymore. You're, you're stuck here, waffling around and your D.Va has been D-Mech too on top of that. 
Yeah, they're just unable to close the space that this double shield has. And they're just set up, and it's really hard to break this with Rush. I'm not sure this composition's going to get them anywhere. A window might be able to force them to back up as Vandom has it here. And maybe combo Wait. that with the tactical visor to just force them out of this room. Yeah, but it looks like UV, they're holding into this doorway. Have a nice angle, and there you go. You just completely wasted Vandium's amplification matrix. They're not going to use the Gravitic Flux while they're all in this tiny room. Jaeger is taking so much damage, but the defense matrix is just clean enough to hold him there, and Dragons to split off the rest of the group. Jaeger, though, gone. Mercy, mercy is going to be the one to take advantage of that. You're on point, so low on health, and they're decimated. Muckduck, they are not walking through that archway anytime soon. Yeah, UV used even using ultimates. I don't even think they're necessary. I don't think that bongos was necessary whatsoever. They had the advantage in that fight, and it's not even mattering as they have this Valk coming in this fight, and Mercy Mercy gets the kill on Talon and already has another tactical visor coming online. Okay, so we're going into PGD for life. Earth Shattered kill for Nather, swinging that hammer around, catches Mercy Mercy out, and now it's putting pressure on to Mr. Robot. They have 64 HP. They're committing the healing station, and their GV4 life is going to be able to back away out out of there with their lice for now. Flying Pudding flies over, brings up Mercy Mercy. Listen, a little Mercy love for Mercy Mercy. Tactical Visor has been activated and now the destruction, the killing spree is gonna begin. Take that back. TV <laughs> for life tries to walk in on point. So Mug Duck were able to flip this over, but now we're into overtime as UVU Esports brings it back around and they're gonna take this first round win and really set the precedence coming in here for this next couple of matches here. Yeah, again, as I said, double shield is just so much superior on Sanctum because you have so many sight lines and space to work with, and the rush just could not close the distance in order to get into the face of the double shield. They were able to do it once, and I think that was just, you know, UVU got a little confident and threw in some ultimates in the previous fight they probably shouldn't have and put themselves at a little bit of a disadvantage. But as soon as they got that res on a Mercy Mercy with that tactical visor, it was over. He popped it, he had all the space he needed, and that was that. So, I mean, these next these next two maps will favor the rush style more for Muck Duck here. But, I mean, UVU looking extremely impressive off the first map. All right, here we go. The gates have been opened. And there are a couple of switches here. Nather's going for the Doomfist, makes a quick switch over. And that could help them out here with just destroying whatever backline they're working for here. The tanks are still the same though, and the immediate breakout fight onto point. So Mr. Robot goes so low, but it was gonna capitalize on that low health. Ruba, little bit out of position right now. They're on the left side by themselves, but they're still gonna be able to get the healing from Flying Puba and Diz. GB for life, they're, they're in sort of this awkward position right now where they want to push in and they want to continue this sort of try to create as much space as possible. But instead, what happens here is that Muck Duck is forced to back off. So it's a trade for a trade. You lose a, you lose a tank and you lose a healer from both sides. And Mortality Field is committed as Fervor is holding on to this statue area. Now there's very low, but they're committing still back onto that. Oh, and the trap! That's gonna be signing their death sentence. They get a couple of grenades to the face from Talon. Okay, so GP4 Life gonna rotate around here and they already have the Earth Shatter. This is gonna be big for them. Catches two. The, the Gravitic Flux. I'm gonna be honest, Ray. Kind of a little bit of a strange time to use it, so to speak. Yeah, I think you were in a losing fight for UVU and you popped your window and your flux when you really shouldn't have. I also think the Doomfist is just not working so far against this rush style. You know, especially when you're playing double shield. Doomfist is a weird hero to play with double shield. When you're playing double shield, you're looking for poke and that's not Doomfist's game as I would be thinking of swapping up here if I was Nathers. Going back to that Hanzo. Oh yeah, Tire takes out Nathers. Now you're down to DPS for UVU Esports. They're gonna use the revive from Flying Pudding. So that kind of kind of makes it moot. Bob throws up into the background. It's not going to stay up for very long. Gets boobed all around this area as Lodge Bear finally takes that out. Fervor activates the tactical visor, but they're running all over the map right to try and make any use of it. Basically nullified there. They get taken out and look how low the DPS was there for that talent. Their, their grenades are just so destructive, so deadly here. And at this point, Muck Duck, they're kind of being finally finding a chance for them to push back here. Nathers rolls back out towards their spawn point, 
And that is going to be UVU Esports flipping it here very soon. Yeah, I mean, again, they're still having to get... It's taking way too long to clear this point as the soldier's going to get the health pack there and start clearing some distance, but... Good. Oh! Oh, no! The boob and... Oh, my goodness, flying pudding! goes down there all alone no one to help them out mercy mercy did get out of it but you didn't come back to get your support doesn't matter though but still that's got to be a feels bad man oh man if i was that mercy but come on man like how are you gonna do me like that like oh man that that sucks there from flying pudding uh you you does have this bob and this window here to work with but just talent on this junk rat is just Bra just was breaking those double shields so much with his junk spam that it forced him to swap over to this Ryan composition, which I think is the smart decision to do here from UVU Esports. Yeah, they're gonna have to worry about that. Okay, Bob is committed, but at the area it's in, Muckduck can pretty much just walk in onto point. There's an Earth Shatter, but it doesn't find very much. Mercy Mercy is just cleaning house though. Look at that kill feed lighting up with their name. I think I think that was three final blows right there. Nathers finds a lone low to bear. They are gone. Here we go. That, Give you esports, 55%. Yeah, that was big on that grab from Jaeger. Puba did a great job of making sure to turn and look for GV for life. Block his shatter, which, you know, with the new shatter change, it could have done massive amounts of damage with how close he was and picked off a lot of people there. Was able to block it, so great job there. And then, again, just allowed Mercy Mercy to just pop off. Now, a different way to go in, instead of going up through the middle, they're going around our tire. Let's see if we we'll find somebody right into the back line, takes out Diz, and does massive damage to Mr. Robot. Look how close they are to getting d -Mac. Literally just need to sneeze on them. Fervor, finally tired of Mercy Mercy, gets rid of them, and the tactical visor is clean through the amplification vision. She gets two kills, and Mr. Robot is going to be the final kill, the final blow for Fervor's reign of terror. The point is back in Muck Duck's favor. Still, though, UV, you eSports, we're at 90%. They need to hold on here. They invested a lot to take that back yeah Muck, again like you said they invested a lot they used tactical visor they used tire they used window they used valk there and they were coming nowhere near any sorts of ultimates as uvu is coming back they have nathers on this cassie now but they have a shatter and a valk and a diva bomb to work with so they have the rest of we're gonna get a huge shatter here from okay. from pooba yeah, the Immortality Field was committed, but it didn't help out here. Loja Bear wasn't inside of it, and now they're just gone. The self-destruct is clean, too. Gets Vanium out of there. Puma is going to push forward here. Keep that shield up. Protect the rest of your team while your DPS is doing so much damage in the back line. And Nathers is going to show fervor the business end of a six-piece. Yeah, and I, I don't know if Ball's going to be able to touch. He should be able to touch your time, but he's just going to get focused so quickly. So it's just going to be the Looster who's going to have to stall here and hope to get... The player's back, oh, but it's not going to matter as Nathers is going long. to pop. Immediately destroyed in UVU Esports is going to take Nepal in their pockets here. Muck Duck, they, they put up a good fight on the second round, but UVU Esports, once they switch their tank line, once they switch their DPS around, there was no mercy for them. Yeah, I mean, you know considering mercy mercy gets played the game i think it's very fitting uh that there was no mercy as you said uh incredible work from uvu i think they're showing they have a little bit more flexibility being able to play that double shield on sanctum and then obviously they tried to play it on um sanctuary which is fine but when it didn't work they were able to swap to the rush composition and it just worked very well for them so they're, they're looking like a very flexible team who can change on the fly if needed yeah, and that's what's so important here is to be able to make those situational changes. Muck Duck, they, they did it a couple of times we saw in this roundup and the, obviously with the, the Talon on the Junkrat, but for the most part, their, their setup was kind of similar here. They really like having the tank line that they have. And I think that kind of bit them towards the end here when UVU Esports switched over to their own sort uh, Ryan Zarya composition and just steamrolled through, destroyed any, I'm sorry, it was the uh, Ryan uh, Diva, uh, Diva composition instead of Zarya, sorry. It was the Ryan Diva composition that was just so destructive. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and again, with, you know, respect to Muck Duck, I mean, again, they put up a great fight on, um, on Sanctuary. Again, it just came down to just the maps. Like I said, on Sanctum, that double shield is always going to be favored. And when the double shield 
was played by UVU, they just absolutely dominated. It wasn't even close. Then you get to uh, Sanctuary, where it's really more favored toward ball compositions and rush compositions. You can make double shield work. It's just a lot tougher. You got to be really good on the rotations with your double shield. It, it just wasn't working for UVU. But again, it just came down to flexibility. They were able to swap over to the rush and even they even started out with doomfist on the rush got won a fight with that and then when they flipped it back over again now there's one to the cassidy and did incredible work on the cassidy so i think it's just coming down to diverse hero pools from all the players on uvu a divide, di and, and it was like we said diverse hero pools indeed we started with a doomfist and a ash on the dps lineup for uvu and then at the end of the game it was a mccree Soldier 76, and they still popped off and got the kills. And in fact, I think maybe it, a UVU Esports, if they're able to recognize this a little bit quicker, it could have saved them a lot of trouble in the long run. They got to 90%, but Muck Duck was really close to being able to take that round. And I think it's just situationally, if they were able to hold on a little bit longer for uh, Muck Duck, and if they had a little bit more ult economy usage i think that's something big for muck duck as well by the way is the ult usage i think it could have worked out really well for them i think it could have been really interesting if we went to village there because that would have been a brawl slug fest there um but yeah. <laughs> like we you started said, off with it ray we started off with village but yeah. then people's skins were enabled yeah exactly and like you said when they took back that point it was just they had to use everything you kind of I mean, you know, in desperation, of course, you need to do that. But, it, you know, it's just, you know, feels bad when you have nothing to coming into the next fight, when you know the team's coming back with ultimates to, and you're one fight away from losing this. Yeah, you are. It, it, the earth shatter at the end from UVU Esports is what, re is what won them the game. Because they're able to use that, they baited out the immortality field. You're able to remove Loja Bear from the entirety of the match. Once you, <laughs> once you eliminated them, they had to come back on a Lucio to try and stall things out. There was no hope for Muck Duck to be able to recover after they had lost their their team. And once you lose a team fight in the final few seconds, you try and come back with a ball. You try to come back with a Lucio. It's just too little, too much. UVU Esports were just in control and they did not let go once they were in that final 10 percent you know it's really interesting looking at this roster for uvu black uh, um I, I recognize a lot of players from last season that i think about it because uvu did have a couple teams in the league last season um i don't recognize all of them but maybe you know some of them are you know staying behind for the summer break puba's one of them and he did an incredible job on that main tank and again mercy mercy's the other one Mercy Mercy was doing an incredible job on the DPS. I think maybe that experience is coming through having done these leagues before, and they've been the ones popping off so far on their respective roles. Yes, indeed. And uh, speaking of experience, Ray, it's time again, our weekly King's Row matchup. That is gonna be our next map for the evening. Scrims Row it is. Everybody loves King's Row. I feel like we talk about it every week on the stream because it's always picked. Excuse me. It's everyone's favorite. You know, everyone loves the UK, man. Shout out to the UK. Shout out to the UK indeed. So who are we favoring right now, Ray? The UVU Esports, Muck Dog, they both played the game of their life in that first roundup in Nepal. But going into King's Row... Things can be a little bit different here. I think I think Muck Duck might have more of a chance for themselves to be able to really make things work here with their brawly composition that they have. I agree. I think it, it's going to depend because you can definitely get double shield to work on these maps, especially defensively. You have a lot of space. Uh, you can hang back around the hotel corner on point and you have a lot of long sight lines no matter which way they go whether they come at you or they go around the statue the only choice they have really is to go through the hotel and then you can just rotate to to the opposite corner of the hotel and hold there um and it's gonna just rely on again that rush needing to close the space even offensively you have the long sight lines it's and defensively if you're playing rush it's gonna be about you making sure you i mean as the comp is called rush into them before they get these long sight lines and set up and allow them to just do lots of poke damage 
it's, it's just really going to depend, but it could be a brawl fest here. We saw UV Sports run it, so it, I mean, it just depends what you're favoring coming in here. But again, like you said, muktuk has got a good chance here with brawl being a very good composition on King's Row. Yeah, and they're going to be the ones to attack first, too, here. So that composition could really work for them. And there you are. Look at that. We have... And we have the typical lineup, so to speak. Loja Bear is going to hold... Uh, and, and, and we have a few changes as well on top of that. Loja Bear was support. Switched over to the DPS now. Yeah, um, interesting here from UVU, it looked... The, the DPS just kind of confused me a little bit. Because Ash wants to stay back and do a lot of poke damage from the high ground. And then you have the May. Normally, if you're going to play the May, you just commit to the full on just front load damage. Or you play a soldier who can kind of play the intermediate game. Um, but Ash is going to want to stay back away from the rest of the team. And the difference here is the Zarya versus the D.Va. D.Va can't oh. eat any Zarya damage, but D.Va has much more utility to work with here. Okay, we had a little bit of emo dancing happening and... The switch off. Instead of a Widowmaker, we're going to be Genji now. Okay. All right. I like that. Bringing out the old ninja. We've seen how scary they could be. The wall off is going to put GB4 life and Jaeger inside of this hotel room all by themselves. And Immortality Field is also going to be used to try and keep them alive. But it's just not enough here, Ray. Two already down. This push gone. It's done. Muck Duck, they are superior. UVU Esports has to back away. And that is what they needed. This is sort of the shot in the arm, Loja Bear. Clean it up, mercy, mercy. So two things. One, Mr. Robot needs to swap to D.Va. With this Hanzo and this, mostly with the Hanzo, so much spam damage from the Hanzo, you need a D.Va to eat that damage. Second, when they got that wall off in the hotel, oh <laughs> again, more reason to swap to the D.Va here. Uh, and when they got that wall off in the hotel, they took too long to push forward and go attack those teammates, the, those enemies separated. They took too long and then they were able to break the wall and get Immor out and it was a lost fight after that. All right, so we have bold maneuvers right here from Fervor. So far pushed up. They were by themselves for a little bit, but now having the support of one of their tanks, both of their tanks, this is going to allow them to hold still for a second. And I think GB for Life is looking for the next opportunity to be able to use this Earth Shatter here. And it's starting to come up a little bit. It's cut off for the rest of the team. Oh, the the May wall put GB for life into an awkward position where they couldn't get the heals. And I think the other supports for Muck Duck, which is so far back. UVU Esports pushes in. That is what kind of should have happened here at begin at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. They got the main wall, they got the separation, they pounced. That's what you do in these compositions. You separate the main tank, you all focus fire, get him down, and then you can't do anything when you don't have your main tank. Muck Tuck coming up on a six pack of ultimates, as I like to call it. You're gonna crack open that six pack here. Hopefully not all of them. You don't wanna celebrate too hard here. You wanna save some for the next day, the next fight but they should be able to crack open some good ones here. Yeah, UVU coming back on their own though. Okay, this is where Flying Pudding uses oh. the beat. They use everything to try and stop Fervor. They committed the beat. They committed the Gravitic Flux. And now look where Mercy Mercy is in the flank. And a huge Irish Shatter is gonna let them just roll back in there and start Cowboy throwing to get a 3K final blow. UVU Esports are giving Muck Duck hell to try and get through this archway. Who needs aim when you when you can just flash all your bullets at once? <laughs> Incredible there. And that was so good there from UVU. They knew that they saw the Genji Blade coming in. They popped the beat like you should. But Mr. Robot with the grab just nullified that Nano Blade combination. Incredible work there from Mr. Robot. Oh yeah, incredible work indeed. And Mercy Mercy playing, this is a really bold maneuver right here, Ray. All by themselves in the back line to try and use that Deadeye. But guess what? He comes up with nothing, so you're stuck there. Oh, ho, ho. Jaeger eats the blizzard and Nathers pays the ultimate price for their transgressions. Disgusting yeah, as we're gonna... work, disgusting. Yeah, as Muktuk's now gonna get the space they need to push here as a pause is going to come in. Um, but again, Muckduck finally gaining some momentum after, uh, finally getting some momentum after UVU 
was starting to just stall them there at that first archway there on King's Row. That can be so tough to push. King's Row's second point can be tough because not only you have the archway that's really hard to push through, and then you have the bookstore corner, which is even harder to push through, and then you have the next corner at, like, the very end before you're finishing the push. So second point can be really hard. you got to start snowballing fights. And uh, it looked kind of like what they were able to do there, but uh, UVU had the just a really weird decision, like I said, of taking the Cassidy and putting them in the back line to use that dead eye. That while you're doing that, you're losing so much front end damage, that poke to kind of hold back the push of muck duck there. And so while you're missing that Cassidy, while they're setting up to use that dead eye, and the and the worst part is the dead eye. It didn't get anybody. It, it was kind of useless because they could just push forward. And 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 you saw what happened there. Muck Duck was able to get one kill, another kill. They ate a blizzard from Nathers and no one to stop that Reinhardt with his shield down. It, it I, I think it kind of cost them there and it could even potentially cost them that point. Yeah, that's the big problem with that. And you got to think about it. You're playing Cassidy. Cassidy's not fast. It's not like you're a soldier, right? You can pop tactical visor, maybe get out that immort like you did on the Cassidy, but you can sprint back to your team and, you know, maybe you get back in time, maybe you don't, but you got a better chance on that soldier with your sprint. Cassidy's not going to be getting back to your team like that. Way too slow, way too much distance to cover. And like we saw, the team just got completely wiped before anything could before you could do anything for your team. And I now look at this, they're stuck back there. This, they, they are stuck back there, and now they have an idea of where they are. So they're not gonna be useful in this upcoming push unless they attack from the back line. Yeah, exactly. As the, Muck Duck does only have this Diva Bomb, they are coming up on a few ults, but for the beginning of this fight, they only have the Diva Bomb as it's going to get initiated. Gonna get Ooh. nobody, however, as the grab gets invested as well. Okay, the Immortality Field also keeps Jaeger alive through that, but now GP for life is gone, and Jaeger is so low on health that Zarya Beam is cutting through them like butter. Mercy Mercy is going to hold back off on point while Fervor tries to chill them out. That's going to be clean there, but now you're all alone. Finally, the D-Mech for Jaeger, and then a kill to top it off with. But Fervor is in that back line, and that's going to be a stagger, a rough one. Muckduck can reform, they can regroup. Now they have at oh. least... A blizzard to work on with that oh we got mercy mercy swapping over to the tracer oh i, I like it just it's, it's gonna gonna have to really go after that anna and that hanzo as muckduck has this dragons and this blizzard online as uvu does have a lot coming online as well they got this beat to counter a blizzard so if i'm the lucy you just got to make sure you stay back don't get caught in the blizzard so you can beat for your team when they oh, do get man. caught. And now walled off, GB for life, couldn't do anything. And they pounced on immediately. Eliminated from the map, UVU Esports has the aggression and they have the damage to just push forward. No, they didn't lose a single person to make Buck Duck regret their decisions here. Yeah, and look at that. Five ultimates now online because of the way that fight went for UVU. And they're already getting close to it. Pulse Bomb and Mercy Mercy literally just swapped a Tracer. Crazy, as Muck Duck just has this Dragon's Window combination. Ooh. And I, I just don't know if it's enough to get them this point here. <laughs> Mercy Mercy got tagged with the Sonic Arrow as they were leaving, or Sonar Arrow as they were leaving. Nah, coming out with their life. And now it's just building towards getting that Pulse Bomb up and see maybe if they can give UVU sort of an easier win here. An amplification matrix thrown down on the ground. And there it is, the easy pulse bomb kill onto Locha Bear. They're using the Graviton Surge 2 on top of that, and now it's using all of their ultimate. The beat comes out. This lets them aggress forward. Even though they lose Poopa, that beat keeps them alive and lets them to be able to aggress in. But these, oh, this, this commitment of ultimate after ultimate, especially in the last 10 seconds, may as well use it now. And as Pooba makes their way back into the void, they still have the Earth Shatter and Wall to seal the deal of Muck Duck here. The only person who can bring it into overtime is going to be Fervor and Vandium all by themselves. They have to use that Immortality Field, but they're alone. No one to stop that. It's taken off the field from Jaegers. The Immortality Field responded in kind, but now Mercy Mercy is dead. Oh, two Earth Shatters! GB for Life throws out their own, and now UVU Esports kind of on the backpedal, but GB for Life, no one to bring their health back up. It's gonna be too dangerous for them to stay alive, and any damage dealt is permanent. And Loge Bear, in the time 
that they were gone off the payload. It has now been lost. Like sand through their hands, UVU Esports. Gonna hold Muck Duck back. They did get very close there, Ray, towards the I first checkpoint. Yeah, they got very close to capping that uh, that point B essentially. Point A essentially is capping the payload, and then they almost were able to cap point B. But, I mean, you have to think it's King's Row. Generally speaking on King's Row, you tend to complete second point. So I think it's a big deal that EVU was able to stop them there and give themselves this win condition here that they don't even have to complete third point whatsoever. They just basically have to get it almost to the end of point two. Ooh. And they're going for a pseudo dive mm. here. The bubble bubble monkey. And they also Double have a doom fist. Bubble, yeah. I mean it could work. I it, it just depends. Like again, you you gotta have really good team coordination. As soon as your monkey gets in there, you gotta give him the bubble. He's gonna have to have tremendous shield placement to just cut off the team from their supports. And then you guys, everyone has to be all in on this dive. The Doomfist and the Echo has to all be ready to pounce as soon as that bubble cuts off the team. Because the, bu the bubble's so fragile. So you gotta be ready to just get those targets that are isolated. Ooh, I like this little angle that Fervor was trying to use in between the, the statue. But thankfully for Muck Duck, they have a Cassie that's going to put Mercy Mercy down on the ground and Flying Pudding, and you can see right there. They're going to have to play it very carefully. Okay, Monkey dives right back in there. The bubble committed to from the Zarya, and now there's going to clean opening pick onto Talon. Muck Duck has to back away immediately. You can see that right there. They're struggling, and they're trying to find where they want to go. It's Mercy Mercy, they don't have the benefit of a Mercy to keep them going. Uba is taking a lot of damage, though. They're going to look for where they want to go, and the <laughs> Nano Grenade, oh, I'm sorry, the Biotic Grenade is just too clean! Mercy, mercy, is that a triple kill? Uh, oh my goodness. Do I say a four? Kill. Do, I, do I see four? And a team uh -huh. kill. Disgusting. Incredible work. Like I said, it was, you, Winston's got to dive in there, you got to get the bubbles, and everyone's got to be ready to pounce. And that's exactly what happened. Pooba goes in, Mr. Robot gives the bubble, they get a good shield in, and Mercy Mercy with the Echo, with the focusing beam, got three, and then finished off a fourth with those sticky bombs. That's exactly how Double Bubble needs to be played. And now as we push the payload, UVU, they only need to go 105.98 meters. That's it. As their win condition, so they know what they need to do here. Mercy Mercy wants to try and catch Fervor out. The rest of the team of Muck Ducks, though, is going to put them back on the ground. They can't do too much with that. And I think in the between area where Flying Pudding was trying to get out of there, Talon is going to catch them out. That is going to be a huge pick for Muck Duck. They can push in and try to do what UVU did to them. The duplication, the duplication is out on the field, but Puba is going to be too much damage with that nano boost. They throw into the back line, and now they're popping the primal rage, seeing whomever of Muck Duck is going to be bold enough to try and stand up to them. Mercy Mercy duplicates the Cassidy and they got a dead eye kill with that. GB for life, they can't hold on to this damage. Puba though, they can't hold on to the damage either. I take that back, but now GB for life. They are gonna feel the fury of a fist to the face. Just look at how dominant Mercy Mercy has been. They forced Muck Duck to go to double hit scan with this soldier Cassidy that they're and it didn't playing. Work out for them. We're supposed to get the soldier. It's not even gonna work out for them. Yeah, Sticky yeah. Bomb kill. Sticky Bomb kill the Soldier 76. And now UVU Esports are so close to that point. Less than six meters to go, Ray. Muckduck needs to go in now. They, they've already used their Immortality Field 2 on top of that. And they're gonna rally to try and throw themselves in there. As GP for life throws down the Earth Shatter. But it doesn't look like it's gonna find too many people. Jaeger's self-destruct is gonna be clean. It's gonna get Diz off the field. Now there's rolling up into the back line. Throws that fist all over the place. But this is gonna be too, it's not gonna be enough. Mercy, mercy, all alone on top of that area. The tactical visor from Fervor is gonna kill Flying Pudding and they're gonna push forward to see if they can find anyone else with that, but they're not gonna be able to. Muck okay. Duck are gonna hold here for just a second longer. Okay, so I was questioning that Valk there from Flying Pudding, but it actually did draw out that tactical visor from Fervor which that's actually kind of huge coming into this next fight because all they're going to have is this window and they probably get a shatter out of it as well. But they have the duplication. The I mean, now they're just going to get taken down, however. They're going to have to back up and reset. But they yeah. do have this Winston ult and this Nano and this duplication online as well as the Doomfist ult. And they just have to win one fight here. 
Ooh, mercy, mercy, so low, but Diz is going to keep that topped off. Same for Mr. Robot, committing a biotic grenade to just keep them alive and keep them going. Duplication for Soldier 76, and now they have their own tactical visor. Thankfully, GB for Life's Shield was there for a second, but a quick clean kill onto Talon, and they're going to commit the Earth Shatter to take out Flying Pudding. They couldn't even get Fl Mercy, mercy with that, though. And now Nathers is going to swing into the back line, eliminate the main tank. And I'm going to be honest with you here, Ray. I think UVU Esports now has where they need to go. Pooba, you can see them in the back line. That outline for them there eliminates Fervor. And UVU Esports are going to take King's Row, bringing them two to zero. And now we are on match point. Yeah, I mean, incredible work from UVU. It just seems like they have a little bit more team synergy. They know exactly what their plans are going into every fight. And I think what's been the biggest difference here, you know, let me know if you agree with me or not, Sam, but I just think they have had better control over their ultimate cycle here. I just think Muckduck has been dumping too many ultimates into crucial fights. And every time a fight starts up, it seems like UVU has more ultimates because of that. Well, you gotta think of it, right? Graham, you gotta think of it here. They use that tactical visor at the end. The team fight was already won. They're just using it to secure a kill onto a Mercy who, yes, you did kill them, but guess what? Now you don't have a tactical visor for the next team fight coming up. So just that's going to be- Valk. Yeah. Like, like, like why even bother? They just wasted Valk. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough one here, but we're going to take a break. Maybe, uh, maybe during that, maybe during this five minute break, Muck Duck can figure out what they need to do to uh, make this situation work for them here. UVU Esports are in the match point.
match point here, Ray. We are in the depths of it here as UV Esports is sitting at two. McDuck, they are struggling for air right now and they need to course correct here immediately. And I gotta tell you, Sam, this map choice only favors, this map only favors UVU even more because we are going to Temple of Anubis. All right, yeah, a two CP map. This is a, this is a interesting map that we don't get to see very often here in, you know, typical competitive play. Temple of Anubis has a interesting sort of, it, it, it's a very, open sky so afara could really work well here but you know what else can work well that's in the air is an echo which we just saw uvu use to well more great the, effect yeah more of the train of thought i was going on is what did we see them play on sanctum double shield and what is the best composition defensively here on anubis double shield so i think this is going to lend to uvu sports insanely and i think i'm even pretty sure they're starting on defense so they're they're gonna start out hot man if they can get a good defense here their attacks not even gonna matter as much they might not even they might if they do well enough they may only need a tick on first point yeah uh, listen that's that's what we could be seeing i mean uvu esports with their tank lineup especially has been able to sort of rebuff whatever muck duck throws at them over and over again and I also do want to say, too, the DPS difference has been massive. Mercy, mercy on when they were on the Echo last round in the air. The focusing beam to get three kills to start off the, the King's Row map when they were attacking was so phenomenal. Muck Duck on the attack once again. And you called it, Ray. Double shields from UVU Esports. Yeah, I mean, it is such a good composition to play defensively here. I am very interested in these DPS they're playing. Soldier Widow. I'm not going to question them. They've been, as you said, they've been DPS definitely this entire time. But normally when you're playing a double shield setup, you have some sort of spam here. You normally have some sort of some kind of Hanzo, some kind of Junkrat, a Torbjorn, but it looks like they're electing to go double hit scan here. We're gonna have to see if this soldier can do enough damage to basically what you want to do is put out so much damage that it makes the rush have to use all of their cooldowns just to get through the choke. And we also have fervor on the Fara, so they're gonna have to deal with this double DPS, double hit scan. DPS lineup here. That's gonna be really oh. difficult for them. Especially, especially very difficult when you get taken out by Nathers. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Mercy is gonna get the revive off of Fervor, but now you're gonna have to watch out. The Widowmaker to clip your wings in the sky. Yeah. Um I mean, nice job there from Nathers to get the, the body shot there onto Fervor as he was already low. As Jaeger's going to get extremely low there on the D.Va. And again, it's going to be tough to make this rotation Ooh. as the Ana's going to go down from Poopa. It's so hard to push these chokes against double shield when you just have this Rhine shield to work with here. And yeah, but now we have a trade for a trade. Flying Pudding is gone. Never mind. I take it back, Ray. A trade for a trade just keeps going further in fervor in favor of UVU Esports. Nathers on this Widowmaker has been living up to their name. The spider is spinning their web and they are catching their targets one after another in it. Okay, Sam, even think about this, right? So when you're playing Rush Ryan, what is one of the most essential supports you need? Lucio. You're exactly. pretty much throwing if you don't have a Lucio to speed boost your Ryan through these chokes on your team. And they're not running one. And that is allowing just this spam between all the different heroes that they're playing to just stop them in their tracks as the, the window's oh, gonna get committed oh, here from UVU. So oh, bad. That was, a, that was a really poor position. And then... Loja Bear pops Valkyrie to try and go in there for the revive, but Mercy Mercy has a tactical visor. Now you're just going straight up into their backline. The flanking soldier is real. And a Gravitic Flux to throw down the rest of UVU Esports into the depths of their own despair. Muck Duck back in spawn. They gotta make something happen here. They have two minutes left to take this point. Yeah, I mean, again, it's really tough when you don't have this Lucio. As they're gonna swap over to the bat. No, they're going back to the Ana. Um, <laughs> You, you can't get through these chokes as a Reinhardt protecting your team if you don't have a Lucio to speed boost you through. As UVU has this 
bongos and this transcendence to work with here. This barrage and <laughs> as Talon's gonna get taken down. I was gonna say the tactical visor has to be, be big here, but he got taken down and Both the, the DPS barrage are gone. that was is just taken out now. Both DPS are gone. You tried to shoot the wings of mercy there, Nathers. I see you. But no one no is going one to that. help and make sure that happens. An accretion kill onto Bambidium and Pooba is the maestro of death as Sigma. They know that two members of Muckduck are in the back line, oh. but they're going to have to watch out for that. And there it is. Nathers, you are insane on that Widowmaker. If you come back and watch this VOD, no, I am very scared of you. Oh, wow. And Mercy, Mercy, look how aggressive that is, Ray. Yeah. I mean, again, like we said, Muckduck isn't doing anything to scare UVU from not being aggressive. It's now he's gonna snipe the Pharah again. If I were Fervor, use that ult as quickly as possible and get off. You have less than one minute left to push the point here. And, and Muckduck, they're kind of twiddling their thumbs at the spawn point. Jaeger's out of mech, and now we're throwing down a bongo. Mr. Robot's gonna go in immediately and a beautiful halt to pull everyone and UVU uh, Muckduck together. And a Gravitic Flux throws them up right back down. And you just throw those orbs onto field. Accretion kills once again. They are landing accretion after accretion. GB for life. That is going to be a stagger. And the tactical visor gets rid of the pharmacy combo. What are you going to do now? You have less than 30 seconds. You got to go. As the saying goes, what goes up must come down. Incredible flux there. Flux bongo combination there from UVU. As Muktuk oh. does have... Oh, oh, right. oh, 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 oh. oh man. The, the, UVU is so aggressive. I barely had time to what even is analyze. This is, what is Nathers? this? Nathers! You are disgusting, nasty, my word. What can you do? What can you do, Ray? I don't think I've ever experienced a game like this where a team is just so emboldened to be so aggressive that you are you don't even have time to even analyze what just happened. They're being so aggressive, the next fight's already happening. It's insane. As they give themselves match condition here, all they have to do is get a single tick here. Ray, are you, I think you just prophesized here, because I think you said at the very beginning, they're probably just going to need to get one tick in order to get this win, and that is going to be all UVU Esports needs here in this match point to win this out, is to get the first tick. You know, they call me a tryhard for a reason. I read the tea leaves, I looked into the stars, and I prophesized exactly what was going to happen on this map. Listen, your prophecies, they, they come true and they're good. UVU, they're going for the, looks like a, just dive, just go quick. Not even give Muck Duck a second to think here. Oh, and we'll pause. Yeah, as there is a DC on the side of UVU, as um, we're going to just continue to talk about this insane defense that UVU had, I mean, Muktuk just looked like they didn't know what to do, man. Like, I don't know why you stick the Pharah for as long as you have. Like, I understand if you were getting value on the Pharah and, you know, maybe the Widow picked you off once, but you were constantly just getting destroyed by Nathers. Like, they couldn't decide what they wanted to do. Every second they went in there, it was gone. But if I were Nathers, the second I saw, one, the Widowmaker, two, the Soldier 76, Put far in the in the in the tool cabinet and bring something out. not the way. <laughs> but then Ray, okay, so okay, all right, maybe maybe you're thinking, okay, the far pharmacy combo could work. I don't know. I think after the first two times, I got immediately killed, even just peeking my head out. That's when you abandon all hope. That's when you abandon the pharmacy ship. Go to Lucio, change the mercy out for Lucio, and then maybe go to a Cassidy or something like that. So that way you can push in on the point quick. Because it was that indecision from Muckduck that cost him everything. Even a Junkrat, if you could just have spam to just break the flimsy shields that Arissa and Sigma have. Arissa and Sigma, as soon as their shields are gone, they don't want to be peeking you. They want to just get back and give themselves more space and buy more time for their shields to come back. And that's going to give your Rhine all the time to take space. And then at least you can even speed boost right into them once those shields are down. And we... Right before we went into pause, Ray, we saw a Junkrat from Muckduck. Fervor was playing the Junkrat. 
So we know they could have gone in that direction to break through the shields, break through the line, to get rid of the Sigma Risa shields and allow the rest of your team to be able to push in forward. But it was it was this sort of commitment. I mean, diehard commitment to Farah. And now UVU Esports, all they need is one tick. And Nathers, we also got to give it to Nathers, though. We really do, Ray. We really do. That was oh. insane Widow technique. They were playing even, Kovacs. I'm even pretty Mercy, sure. Mercy on the Soldier, man. When his team was doing all that damage, he was so smart. If you saw the tactical visor, he got the one pick, knew they were all backing out, trying to get away. And he did, flanked all the way around, knew where they were coming, and went back and got two more kills on the tactical visor. We even saw him get the pharmacy on the tactical visor, just pushing up so aggressively almost into their spawn. Like, th th this is just all around incredible team play from UVU Esports, as they're going to go Bald Diva here. Yeah, just go as quickly as you possibly can, try and disrupt anything that can happen. And two on top of that, Talon is gonna be on the Widowmaker, so maybe they're hoping they can hit the shots as cleanly as Nathers, but with this rush style composition, go straight on to point, or I'm sorry, dive style composition, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but Fervor is gonna be the one to open up on us here with a kill onto Puma. Now UVU Esports is kind of on the back line, but they have so much time to work with here to take one tick, mistakes can be made. And now UVU Esports is set up in the high ground. We'll see what's gonna happen. Fervor jumps over, throws the grenades, pushes them all for a second. Yeah, I don't disagree. I do like for Roma's jump scratch. Just, oh, oh. Ooh, as, as I say that, Mercy Mercy takes him out here. He's he made... trapped, but it's not going to matter here, as that's a solid opening pick here for UVU Esports. And now they have free reign on top of this second, this high ground to lay down the Cowboy Justice. And there you have it, Ray. UVU Esports rolls right onto point. The ball didn't make it, but the rest of the team did. And they are going to take this match point and go up 2-0 in this to quote, series. To quote one of my favorite childhood cartoons, it's sweet, sweet victory. Yeah, baby. Let's go. UVU Esports getting this victory 3-0. Again, they just took this in style, man. They, they just knew their game plan going into every map and executed it to perfection. Yeah. Perfection indeed. And it... Muck Duck was kind of all over the place as well on top of it. But still, though, I do want to say both teams played well tonight. UVU Esports and Muck Duck both did a phenomenal job here. They gave us both gave us some great games that we got to watch. UVU Esports are going to be the ones to come out on top with a clean sweep three to zero. That is a sort of pat yourself on the back and feel good as you continue your undefeated streak, Ray. Yeah, again, just UVU just looked like the much more flexible team. As we saw throughout this entire series, we saw Rush, we saw Double Shield, we saw Double Bubble, we saw Bald Diva. They ran many different combinations. And even with the different Rush and the different Double Shields they ran, they had different variations. They had Soldier Widow Double Shield, they had Hanzo Soldier Double Shield, they had Ryan Zarya Rush, they had Ryan Diva Rush. So the, just the diversity throughout all their players on this team is going to be a big plus for them going forward through the rest of this summer, uh, summer showdown tournament we have here. Absolutely. Well, well, that is going to be it for us for tonight. It was a phenomenal showing, like I said, between both of these teams. But make sure you come back with us next Thursday as we have more Overwatch games set up for you all. My name is Sam Talks, and of course, my lovely co-caster to Try Hard Ray, and the great production staff that have been behind us, Hippie and Kothar. You guys were always amazing, forever and always. Anyways, we'll see all of you next week. We should be here.